Um, I'm Heather Brown, and for those of you who don't know me, I work at NCEI, which is the National Environmental, or sorry, not for, I work for NESDIS under uh, NCEI, which is the National Centers for uh, Environmental Information. In Asheville, North Carolina is my location. Uh, we have a couple locations. But my primary job role as a contractor with Riverside, I've been with NCEI for 13 years now. Um, I work on the archive data management um, best practices and I work with a variety of data sets um, trying to steward them and make sure you know data is a, has a life cycle it's constantly being updated and reinvented so I try to help with that life cycle uh, enhancing it making it better keeping it up to date with technology so I work with the whole gamut of data. That's my job, is to help with that environment. So in that, I'm very active in ESIP. I've worked with the citation group, uh, um, all sorts of groups. I can't even, the data stewardship, preservations, all of them. And then when this group started pe peeking out a couple, like a year ago, a little over a year ago, um, definitely got my attention. And then I had to, over the past year, do a lot of work with, uh, commercial data and I've had some interesting experiences and my leadership has said basically yeah uh, see how what other people are doing so that is why I'm here and I wanted to give you my take on what we've experienced over the years um, in my personal experience so a lot of this is my experience I am speaking for myself there are no official guidance rules or obligations from NCEI on this conversation. I uh, just want to put that out there now. Um, with that, I do as a contractor have to acknowledge my support um, from the contract companies. You can read the slide. Okay, so what is NCEI? Um, if you don't already know, we are, we provide public access to over 37 petabytes of comprehensive, like I said, lots of different types of data. Um, people think we're just climate, but climate includes everything from the center of the earth to the sun. So we have tons of variety of data, various formats. Um, and yeah, we archive. Yeah, so these numbers seem like they, they vary, but it's more of what we archive versus what we act, show the public. Um, and so I see some people are like, what? Well, there's different numbers. But that is, okay, so when you go to a museum, you only see a small portion of what is there. Um, but we're constantly working um, on making sure all of the data is preserved. Um, but only a few bits and bytes of, you know, percentage of that is actually out in the public, used constantly, but if people ask for, we can give them whatever we have for the most part. I'll get into that in a minute. Um, but the part I do is this bottom section here is where we meet um, the growing need. And the, I try to keep up to date on the technology, the best practices, um, the, uh, what the vision is for users and what they need. So NCI's latest um, vision is for the Blue Economy Initiative. If you've not heard of that, it's a great um, read if you, you want to, if you have some time on an airplane or, you know, if you're stuck somewhere and you really need something, you know, give you the good feels, the Blue Economy Initiative. Um, our stewardship practices try to help run the gamut of all these types of data. So, we're not very specific. We have to be open enterprise, if you will, is the buzzword for that. We have to be very willing to take any and everything but at the same time, because we take everything, we have to steward it in a way that it's all the same. So it makes, you know, it makes it very difficult to try and make things very specific for one specific user, if that makes sense. So we try to give out of the information that we can uh, as far as best practices and so forth. That's why we keep up to date with ESIP to know what people are looking for, what they need, how they want it. Um, but yet sometimes our hands are tied because we have to match the rest of 
our data users as well um, and what we can provide. So with that, we have insights to different dynamics um, that inform our strategy and decisions and making you know, what we do and how we do it. But we have to work with government, academic, and private sector. We've always had to work with private sector. It's not like a new thing. I know it's a big buzz thing now to be public-private partnerships and stuff. But uh, when I reached out to our user um, branch chief, our uh, customer service branch chief, he reminded me of some data sets that we've been doing for decades with um, users in private uh, commercial entities, if you will. Uh, with that, I wanted to give you a couple examples. These are just off the top of our head kind of data sets that we work with. The Vasala Lightning data was before all the goes and the nice um, uh, lightning mapping technology was out. We used a private company. We paid a few hundred dollars a year to receive the Vasala Lightning data that they allowed us to include in our um, data sets that had um, storm data. It's called our storm database. And so that data will be for insurance purposes. So if you say your car got destroyed by a lightning or something, we didn't really have a lot of ground truthing data for such uh, very sparse information. So Vasala was a private company that had that information. And so we worked with them. Be like, look, you know, I know you need this information to be able to make your products and do your thing and make money. But can we, you know, use it in a, I think we have an embargo period with that one as well. Can we use it for retrospective users who need to know where lightning struck, how often? And also it's vital in uh, climate studies. I know for my own college research, I used it. So that was one that, has kind of always stuck with me. Radio occultation, commercial one, is the one I'm going to get into in a few minutes here. That one has been my biggest learning curve uh, as of late because that is a company, that one we did a commercial data buy for under Nesdis. Um, and this particular one caused a timeline crunch and a lot of heartache because it was the radio occultation data on CubeSats. I don't know if a lot of you have worked with CubeSats before, but you know they can send them up fairly quickly, um, and they come back down, so the data are pretty quick turnaround for satellite data, uh, low Earth orbit satellite data, and you know companies can afford the flight cost to get um, sent up on low Earth orbit. Uh, it's kind of cool to watch those videos on YouTube to watch them. Uh, send those off. But next thing I know, a month later, you know, the commercial entities are like, hey, I've got this awesome data for this very small space of uh, geospatial area, CM, but for a very specific time, and I'd like to have it archived. You know, And I'm like, that's great, uh, as long as I can give it out to people. And they're like, ooh, I don't know about that. So we'll get into that in a second. But Matus is another one that's a huge data set we use. Um, and it has a variety of public and private networks, um, weather telemix, um, weather bug, that's what I almost tried to say. Uh, we use all sorts of commercial data with that. And then that one is big enough that we've been working on the agreements and users long enough that the commercial entities see the value add. Um, they don't, they're not as, that's my data, don't share it kind of attitude. So that one is definitely proof in the pudding of the longer you work with them, the more they see and the less they are like, that's mine, don't share it, I need to compete with other companies. You know, this one has shown that that can, you know, after a while, things can loosen up and people understand the value add and they can prove, hey, I've done good work with the government and here's how people use it. So. That one is actually a really good lesson um, in the longevity of the relationship that you can make with people. Um, ICOADS is an international data set for oceanographic data throughout the world. Now this one's, we use thousands of inputs for this data set. Um, and we make multitude of products, even though the, the main version of that product only comes out every 
four, four years, give or take. So that one, that's, you know, if a ship, you know, Joe Bob's fishing ship decides to do a network, you know, they're allowed. They can opt in, but they have to opt in. And sometimes they don't want their shipping routes known. So, it, you know, we don't force anybody, but that's where a lot of the ocean data people we were really excited when people were like, here's my data. We're like, oh, really? You're going to give it to me? Great. I'll take it. And we don't, we give a little less or a little more leeway with restrictions and types of data that they do and the data management. We're like, we'll figure it out. If you're willing to give data, that's great. So if they're willing to do it, they usually take it. And there's a lot of QC involved when we do that. Um, so I'll get into lessons learned in a minute. Deepwater Horizon, I don't think I need to explain what that is for anybody here. Um, if you do, you've not been swimming in the Gulf in the last decade um, and worried about the oil spill <laughs> that happened. So any of that data we've also archived as well. Uh, some of it's restricted, some of it is not. Um, it was a big project. We had to keep a lot of it for legal um, congressional reasons. So there was a lot of deal there. I don't think um, BP wanted us to have the data per se, um, but we had to. Uh, and so there's different use cases there. Are there any specific questions regarding these use cases that I just kind of threw up at everybody? I'm going to go into our lessons learned in a minute. Hey, Heather. Uh, this is Dave uh, Jones. Um, hey, I Dave. just had a quick question for... Uh, for some of the use cases with the private sector data, do do, um, do people specifically ask for uh, data in the past for a particular day, uh, or do they ask for a particular company's data so they can see what's you know what's happened? Uh, and just one other tag onto that is: do they ask you about um, where those sensors are located at all? You know, for um, accuracy of the of the data collection. Thanks. Okay. Yeah, there was a lot of there. I'm gonna, okay. Okay, so um, yes, to all of it, um, except for company. I cannot guarantee that one. I don't, I'd have to ask our customer service manager on that one, uh, but they do specifically ask for day or a data set in a location, especially for climate data. Uh, and the other big thing we do at NCI is certified data for court litigations. So, yeah, they need to know exactly who was who was it there, you know, what day it was, where it was. They need to know all the specifics they can. And sometimes in that might in that case, if we have data that describes the variable that they're looking for, like lightning, um, for example. But what we do is they don't ask for the specific company. They don't say, hey, I want Vasala's lightning data. They go, I need lightning data for the specific day and location. And we go, okay, great. Here's our storm database data. And we, in the metadata, the data about the data. I don't know if people know what metadata is, but in this context, that is our information about what we're giving you. It's our citation, our bibliotheque for the book or data we're going to give you. That metadata describes where we got all that information from, which would include, by the way, we got this lightning data from Vasala. Um, that's it. We don't give them like the software code or anything that Vasala used. We don't have that. Does that answer your question? Yep, that's great. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Anyone else? Okay, so lessons learned. This is where I had to, I was hesitant to give this presentation because I want, the way I'm approaching this is, yes, it can be difficult sometimes, but we're two different groups, private and public. Um, we don't like to hide our data, you know, we get, we have to be public and open to, you know, we're government. We were funded by the public. We have to be there for the public. That's who we, we serve. And commercials would say, that's who we serve too. But at the same time, we have different drivers. Um, and that's fine. Each are good in their own right. And we can work together. 
we can learn from each other but it can be difficult <laughs> and it can be i'm gonna win this race and you're not doing any better than me and that attitude i try to squash immediately um if they're gonna work with us we're you know yes we may be very nitpicky about versioning and da -da -da or anything like that but the sooner we get that information to them and the more we are tr the attitude we give them about we're here for you we're here to help you we're here to make your data more visible and preserved not only for now but in the long haul and i know that most commercial entities they're about now let's get it done let's go okay that was last quarter's hot button move on you know this is well when you want that hot item back in a, three years are you going to understand it can you can you actually use it anymore or have you moved on technology wise where you can't use it anymore well because you gave it to us we can now say well here's how you use it here's all the information here's the metadata the data about the data here's the you know how we versioned it that's what this means and you know this was who was on the project at the time um, and stuff like that so the intrinsic knowledge that would have been left that usually cycles through a lot faster in the commercial in industry we write it down we make sure that it's preserved um, so that one you know as soon as we get the standards to them the more they're willing to work with us and the more that it becomes a symbiotic relationship between the two um, and the more they understand that I actually care about how their file names are you know like oh yeah that makes sense you know um, and then the restrictions and licensing has been one of the biggest hurdles um, legal implications because commercial private or private industry they're more uh, likely to sue somebody for uh copyright infringements and and stuff like that whereas you know the librarian data science person in me is like ah, you know I, I i i said it was yours <laughs> i'm not trying to like claim anything so but we're not used to that we're in the research mode we're in the share and give it out freely um so we've learned from both sides on how to do that and how to work that. But that has to be another conversation that's up front and you have to be uncumbered and willing to have that conversation with whoever it is you're partnering with. And they have to understand that we get FOIA requests. You know, why we have congressional hearings, we have to, we get our emails subpoenaed. We have to work with them, you know, and that's why we ask the questions we usually do. And then also the systems they get to work in the cloud i get to work i'm just starting to work in the cloud but they you know they they're usually about the latest and greatest and they move on their technology a lot faster than the government does but that's not to say that's a bad thing so we're learning from them and they're learning from us as well um, and then the timeline expectations you know that really got my tortoise and hare <laughs> uh driving that home because yes they may win the race they may get there faster they may be done in iterative processes a lot faster than us but i can go back to my data a lot longer and a lot more very detailed information um, and that's our goal so we're meeting in the middle with these partnerships and that's the greatest lesson i've learned in working with them